Ahim Prabha from uh, Bahia Kedisan. He called me Prabha. Okay, uh, my question will be, uh, okay, uh, you see nowadays we have lots of beverages being sold with the tagline of zero sugar, no sugar, zero, sugar free. So are these artificial sweeteners and what's your take on that? Right. So the, the question was, if you're trying to lower your sugar, should you use artificial sweeteners instead? That's the question. And there are many artificial sweeteners and there are new ones coming out all the time. Are they better? So, four years ago, if you had asked me that question, I would have to have said, I don't know. But now I do know, because the data are now out. And here's the easy way to think of it. The toxicity of one Coca-Cola equals the toxicity of two Diet Coca-Colas. Half as bad. But half as bad does not mean good. It means half as bad. Still toxic, but half as bad. Now, you say, wait a second. No fructose, no calories. How can it be bad? It can Here's why. Number one, and it's bad for three reasons. First reason, actually four reasons, four reasons. First reason, you put something sweet on the tongue. Message goes tongue to brain. Sugar's coming. Brain goes to pancreas. Sugar's coming. Get ready to release the insulin. But then the sugar never comes because it's a diet sweetener. What does the pancreas do? It's been told sugar's coming, but the sugar never comes. Does the pancreas release the insulin anyway? And the answer is yes, it does. It releases the insulin anyway. So even though the glucose didn't go up, even though the fructose was not there to be converted into fat, you still generated an insulin response. And it turns out that insulin response will still drive weight gain. And this is why there are no studies in the world's literature that show that switching from sugar beverages to diet beverages lead to weight loss. In addition, because people think that no fructose, no calories, hey, I can have 10 of them. Well, if they're half as bad, if you have 10, that's five times worse, right? So that's the first problem. Second problem, turns out the diet sweeteners, remember those, that microbiome, what's going on in the gut? The diet sweeteners change the microbiome and make the bad bacteria proliferate. And that causes problems of leaky gut and causes inflammation by itself, having nothing to do with fructose. So it in and of itself is a problem, just the chemical itself. And then the third thing is that fat cells have receptors for diet sweeteners, and so it forces energy into fat anyway. And number four, it still signals the reward center in the brain, and so you still want more. So when you add those four things up, the insulin still goes up, the microbiome still gets altered, there's receptors on fat cells, you know, for diet sweeteners, and you still generate a reward signal. There's still a problem. So even though it's not calories, even though it's not fructose, it's still not good. Now. If you're telling me I am a soda addict, I drink 20 sodas a day, and some people do, and so I want to move to 20 diet sodas a day, that's still better than 20 sodas a day. So depending on where you're starting, it might be useful. But the real goal is to get down to zero sodas a day. And if diet sodas can help you do that, great. But in and of itself, they are not the answer. They're a way to temporize the problem, kick the can down the road. 
Does that answer your question? Doctor, uh, one more. Uh, earlier in your talk, you did mention that uh, Southeast Asians uh, does, are not designed to carry weight, fat. Remember that? What's not? Uh, you, you said this now, I mean, earlier in your, your talk, you said that Southeast Asian, Southeast oh. Asians, Southeast South, South, Asians, Southeast Asian, Southeast Asian, Southeast Asians, sorry, Southeast Asians, Southeast are Asians, not designed to carry fat. Right. Yeah. Why? Why is that? So? Yeah. I wish we knew. I do not know. <laughs> Everyone wants to know this. Okay. And I think somebody, whoever figures this out, will win a Nobel Prize. Why is it that African Americans don't get sick until their BMI goes up to 35? Why is it that Caucasians and Latinos, they start getting sick at a BMI of 30? And why is it that Asians, Southeast Asians and th South Asians, start getting sick at a BMI of 25? I don't know. We are very interested in this and we are doing a lot of research to try to answer the question. We think, and this is just a speculation right now, we think that there are certain transcription factors that promote fat cell development in utero. And we think that uh, African Americans and Caucasians are exposed to those transcription factors, so they have a bigger load, they have a bigger pool, a bigger bucket to put adipose tissue later on. And Southeast Asians, for whatever reason, do not. And so when they gain even a little weight, a lot of it ends up in the liver instead. So. Southeast Asians have to worry about liver fat even more than Americans and African Americans do. And this is why you have a higher diabetes rate at a lower obesity rate than we do. Because we have more subcutaneous fat to absorb it. Bigger bucket, if you will. Maybe, maybe it's related to our physicals. Yeah. It's a very important question, and thank you for asking it. And I wish I had the answer, because then I could win the Nobel Prize. Thank you, Dr. <laughs>